One of the best things about driving an electric car is that you never have to buy gas ever ever again visit the gas station uh, unless your windshield is dirty but this is a big advantage but what people do forget is that you still have to fuel your car and 99.9% .9 of the time you're going to do it at home uh, rather than uh, somewhere in superchargers or fast charger networks you only use that for road trips really but most people charge their car at home and the charging time is essentially about you know seven seconds because three seconds to plug it in four seconds to unplug it in the morning but the rest of the time that you, you're not concerned about it so that's the only time that you spend worrying about refueling your car Unfortunately, most people are not as prepared as they should be as far as installing the home charger at their home or sometimes even an apartment complex. And even if you have one right now, did you pick the right solution for your car, for yourself, for your for your wallet? Well, we're we're in the right place in the right time because Tom Malogny of Inside EVs is here to talk about it, and he is an expert. As a matter of fact, you will see he has his garage is covered in all kinds of electric chargers. He's been testing them for a long time. He pretty much knows everything about them. He'll tell you about quite a few different models, uh, what will work for you, what kind of adapters to have. I mean, just so many things to talk about. Uh, if you already have one. You'll see if you've done it right or you need to redo it or do something different. If you're thinking about buying an electric car, this is definitely a video for you. So without further ado, let's get going right now. Welcome to E4 Electric, your number one source of unbiased electric car news. If this is your first time here, go ahead and click on that subscribe button down there so you don't miss anything moving forward. All right, so as you guys know, uh, this is our weekly segment called Plugged In with Tom Malogny, and we explore all these different topics. He is... He is an expert in so many different things. We talked about the uh, training of car dealers uh, to sell electric cars last week, which actually he's also an expert in. And today, you know, a lot of times you guys see that he's got this, I call it uh, uh, a, a, a wall of power that he has in the garage. You'll see that in a second behind him. Uh, so, and by the way, can we just give some credit to me? I, I, this picture that I <laughs> that I took last night, um, I had my date. <laughs> yeah, that's right. I was going out on a date and I asked her to take all kinds of pictures for me so we can use it today we took like a thousand i have to say we make good time like this is one of them uh and by the way this is the real color of my skin at that time we have like 120 degrees here and it's my garage so so we had a good time but uh the pictures are courtesy of my date from last night so thank you to her uh, for doing that all right so let's talk about chargers specifically home chargers and apartment chargers before that a quick reminder that this video and this channel is sponsored by byte and check out their all electric suv called ambite uh, which i'll be test driving in the next few days so uh subscribe to the channel for that video but look how fast it is uh to uh, to reserve one mainly because there is no payment page that's right it's absolutely free um Join myself and 50,000 other people who's done that. There's a link in the description of this video. So reserve your bite on today. All right. So let's switch away from this picture. Let's switch to Tom's picture and have him on so he can tell us literally everything you need to know about home charging. Tom, how are you, my friend? Hey, Alex. Doing great. Thanks for having me again. All right, so there's a, there's that wall of power right behind you, and we're not even getting the full shot of that. Um, well, first of all, tell us how you acquired this. I mean, literally, you have more stuff that you would see at, uh, uh, at any store that sells these. Um, how did you acquire so many of them, and uh, what, uh, what your experience has been uh, so far? Do you have a favorite? Okay, so th th there's a lot to unpack there. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I've been uh, writing reviews for electric car charging equipment for close to 10 years now. So uh, writing for Inside EVs, a lot of these uh, car uh, charger companies want to get their products reviewed. So uh, they would either reach out to us or I would reach out to them and say, hey, uh, we're doing a uh, comparison review of level two chargers or portable level one chargers, whichever high power chargers, would you like your products to be included? And uh, they would send them over. So as many as I have here, and, and I've got a lot, I probably have 30 to 40 chargers in my garage right now. You, you get to see, those are only the finished ones that are on the wall. I've got boxes of them on the side and on shelves and <laughs> ones that I've used and then taken down. So anyway, over the years, I've amassed quite a collection, and uh, most of it is for writing reviews for the products for Inside EVs. 
All right. Well, that's I. You know, every time, every time we do the interview and you have it behind you, I always was curious about all the knowledge that also they they have and really you have in your head. Okay. Well, listen. Here's the thing. Let let's talk about both types of owners. Uh, uh, that the ones that already have an electric car and and the ones that are thinking about it because you know. Most of the time, you're supposed to charge at home because, you know, you just plug it in, you go to sleep, you wake up, your tank is full. Um, tell us what is the process uh, that people should go through, especially when they're getting their first electric cars, and when should it start? Because it should start before you buy one. Uh, I, I, I even know that. Uh, where they should start and what is the process for them to pick the right one uh, uh, for uh, the type of electric car they're thinking about buying? Sure. So, you know, depending on what type of electric car you're getting is going to have a big impact on which is the right charging equipment for you. And first of all, one of the things I'd like to start out by saying is I know that the car charges has the chargers built into the car. Invariably, whenever I do a video or write a review and call these car chargers, somebody's going to post in the comments, Oh, you don't know what you're talking about. Uh, this is just EVSE, which is electric vehicle supply equipment. These aren't chargers. You know, your whole article is 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 based on a, a misconception. Are so, you yeah, telling I, me? Are you telling me there are haters out there that will actually? <laughs> oh my God! I'm, I would. I do not believe that. I just do not believe that. So it's not in the comments. Yes, yeah. I know. Alex knows the charger is built into the car. These products simply supply electric safely to the car. They are electric vehicle supply equipment or EVSE. That said, the general public is not going to use the term EVSE. It just isn't happening. They're going to call them chargers. And in order for mass adoption, we have to accept that's what pe the term people are going to use. And that's what we have to say so they understand what we're using. We don't need to educate every potential electric car buyer and explain the in intricacies of supply and power in the charger for the purpose of of what we're doing here we call these chargers okay um by the way so tom can i just ask me in the comments go right ahead but i call them chargers and uh that's what most people understand. Did, did so, they just suck up all of the power that they think just got super dark? Did, did you forget to pay your electricity bill? What's going um, on there? <laughs> well, no, actually, I probably plugged the car in. So my whole neighborhood dims when uh, when right. I plug cars in because I, I, I can charge like six cars Because that's how it once. works. Yeah, that's right. Unfortunately, what happened is I'm, I'm relying on outside light and it all of a sudden it got dark. I think a cloud passed by so <laughs> okay can't really you did pay your that. electricity bill i'm just making sure now no we're okay man we're okay i was just i just i just looked over and it's in the dark go on man go on hopefully the sun will shine again i don't think people watch for our faces i i think <laughs> it's that's the information really i think so let's let's uh go on sorry okay so <laughs> anyway, that, so we're talking about what do you do first uh, depending on what kind of electric car you buy uh, uh, a plug-in hybrid or a fully electric car that's going to have an impact a plug-in hybrid has a much smaller battery than a fully electric car. So you don't need to charge it necessarily at such a high rate. For many people, just level one charging, which is a 120 volt supply, regular household outlet. Uh, if they have a plug-in hybrid, uh, 120 volt charging, chances are, is going to be okay. Uh, so that most of the EVs today come with a 120 volt level one charger. There's a couple now like Audi, for instance, that, in, that, is including a level two charger with the car. Tesla always has done that. We're gonna talk about Tesla separately here today because like many things, Tesla really did some research and before they began selling cars, they decided that they were going to really ease the pain of the customers and take away a lot of problems by supplying all their own equipment with the car. But we'll, we'll get to that a little bit later. So initially we're talking about everybody but Tesla. So you have to decide if you need a level two charger or level one charger that comes with the car. Uh, most people that buy fully electric cars are really going to want to get a level two charger. Some people can get away with a, the level one if they don't drive a lot, but most people are going to want a, a, a level two charger, which is 240 volts. So now there's two things you have to be considerate of. Um, do you control the supply of electricity where you live? Uh, meaning do you own your own house or live in a, ha a private residence where you can just add a circuit? If you live in a big 
condo complex or an apartment building, you may not be able to do that. Secondly, if you do have control of your electricity supply, do you have the capacity? Uh, many of the older homes don't have any enough spare capacity to add another circuit because you need a, a 30 or 40 or 50 amp dedicated circuit to install proper level two charging. In some homes, their circuit panels, their, 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 their service panels are completely maxed out. They can't add anything else. I got to tell you, man, I, I, you're, you're, you're preaching to a choir here. When I installed, I, I had to install two chargers, right? One for Tesla, one for my Volt. And uh, I, I, I had to upgrade my panel, uh, the, 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 the control, the electrical panels. But because of that, it maxed out. And people don't think about it. But this is something that you really have to, because uh, is it covered by your, uh, like, the home uh, warranty? Or do you have to shell out how much? Because, you know, it cost me $3,000 just to upgrade my panel. Now, it obviously increases the value of your house because now you can have so much more electricity coming in. But nevertheless, people got to think about it. So you're, you're right. definitely and, talking about and, this guy. And as you mentioned, it, to upgrade your service panel isn't just a couple hundred dollars. It's thousands of dollars. So that's yeah. one thing that you have to take into consideration. Do you have to upgrade your, your, your service panel? So those things aside, okay, you have, you can control your supply. You, you have enough capacity or you've added the capacity, now you can install a proper level, level two charger. Which one do you choose? There's so many of them on the market. You know, only seven or eight years ago, there were like three or four, that was it. Uh, and now it seems like every month I see there's another company selling a level two charger. Many of them uh, are, are very poor quality. A lot of them are coming over from China now, there, there's demand. so. They're popping up like crazy, and, and some of them, they're not safety certified. Uh, I open them up and look at them. The connections are all crimped instead of welded. Uh, they're just very poor quality. So the first thing I like to tell everybody is, in my recommendation, is don't buy a unit unless it's safety certified. Uh, you know, I, that some people might say, oh, UL listing is a waste of time. You don't need it. I don't have that opinion. Uh, I think that... Uh, especially for electric car charging, it's really important that the unit is safety certified. And any of the reputable companies out there today have gone through the process of safety certification. Uh, you just don't know what you're getting if it hasn't been safety certified. It might be a good unit, but it might not be. And here's the thing about electric car charging, level two electric car charging. You're gonna be doing it, chances are every day or nearly every day. It's gonna be the largest electric draw in your house for many hours at a time every day. So you think about that. This unit is going to be, you know, more electricity is going to pass through this unit every day than anything else in your house, including your central air conditioning, your pool pump, your electric range, your electric dryer. More energy is going to come through this thing every single day than anything else. So you want it to be well built and able to last many years. Tom, so, so sorry one. to interrupt again. So how do I know if it's certified? Is there some sort of a logo? Do I ask? How, how do I figure that out? Sure. Whenever you go to buy it, whether it's online or, you know, well, be everybody buys everything online nowadays. If you get it in person, it'll be on the box. You'll see the safety certification labels on the box. The UL is the, is the big one here in the U.S., uh, there's a different one for Canada, a different one for Europe. But in, in the U.S., you really kind of want to look for that UL listing on the side of, on the, side of the box or uh, on their website. And if it's cert safety certified, they will prominently display that on their website because, the, you know, they're, they're proud that they've gone through that certification. It's very expensive to get uh, a charger like these in, uh, or any product safety certified. It might cost fifty, sixty thousand dollars $60,000. So it's, it's not something that, some guy in his garage, you know, welding things or putting things together will likely do. It has to be a company that's established and is going to plans on selling this product for a long time. And that's really what you want to look for. Most of the big companies now have it. But what we're seeing is, a, like I mentioned before, a lot of new upstart companies advertising super low prices on Amazon uh, and they're just junk. And I would not put that in my house. I would not plug that thing in, charge my car overnight where I'm sleeping with something that, you know, a company that just started three months ago and hasn't gone through the expense of having the, uh, the unit certified. So that's number one. 
Uh, number two, some of the other things you want to look at is cord length. Uh, how far do you want the cable to reach? Some of the lower price units offer a standard 16 foot cable. In my experience, that's not long enough. I want something at least 20 feet. You want it to be able to reach to any point in your garage or if you have it mounted outside to any point of your driveway. Some days you have to park in different positions. You don't want the cable not to be able to reach. So I recommend at least 20 feet. Some of the the, the good chargers out there like Charge Point, Clipper Creek, uh, NL, the Juice Box, they, uh, they, have, they come standard with c cables that are like 24, 25 feet long, which is definitely something that I prefer. Um, then you wanna talk about outdoor, uh, since I mentioned uh, if you mount it outside. If it's outside, you definitely want it outdoor rated. Most of these units are, but then there's something you wanna look at. There's NEMA three outdoor rating and NEMA four outdoor rating. NEMA 4 is better than NEMA 3. They're both rated for outdoor use, but NEMA 4 can withstand blowing wind. It can actually withstand a direct hose. If you took your hose and sprayed it directly on, on the unit, water would not get into it. NEMA 3 is rated for outdoor, but if you took your hose and sprayed it right on it, water will get inside the enclosure to the electronics. So in my opinion, while NEMA 3 rated devices, an example of a NEMA 3 rated device is the Charge Point Home, which is a good unit, but it's NEMA 3 rated. I think it's great for indoor use. Personally, I probably wouldn't mount it outside, um, although people have and say they don't have any issues with it. I just like that extra level of security. A couple of the NEMA 4 rated devices would be the Juice Box and Clipper Creek and Flow. So th there are some of the units that might be a little bit more robust for outdoor um, uh, use, but what I would do if I were you, if I was going to mount it outside, look at the different units, see what their ratings are and make your own decision on that. And uh, also I should probably decide... mention that some people mount the unit on the inside, but run the cable to the outside because they end up parking the car outside, right? So that still I've needs to that. have that rating as well, correct? Yeah, well, you know, that, that would be then, then the NEMA 3 rating would be fine because the unit is inside. Uh, you know, that, then I would have no problem with that. I mean, if you're going to mount the whole unit outside and it's not going to be in any kind of enclosure or covered space where you can get uh, blowing rain and wind, it also depends where you live. If you live in San Diego, it might not be as big a problem as if you lived in Buffalo, New York. You know, if you live in, in, in some of the northern states, I would definitely recommend a NEMA 4 rated unit if you're going to mount it outside. Uh, one of the one of the best units for outdoor use is made by a Canadian company, Flow. Uh, that's a NEMA 4 rated device. I have it on the wall behind me here. Uh, and the outer casing is like built like a tank. Um, it's one of the heaviest units that I've ever installed. The thing weighs like 30 pounds. And it has like quarter inch thick aluminum case on the outside and all kind of gaskets to prevent any kind of moisture from getting inside. Because it's a Canadian company and many of their customers are up in Canada, the weather's pretty rough up there in the winter. So that's one of the considerations uh, for outdoor use. But the uh, juice box and also Clipper Creek units are NEMA 4 rated and the, they, they don't have any outdoor issues either. Uh, but it's just a consideration if you are gonna mount the, this, the, your, your charger outside. Uh, a couple of the other things you wanna look out for is do you want a hardwired unit or a plug-in unit? I tend towards recommending the plug-in units. I like the portability of it. And even if you're not gonna take it with you anywhere, if there's ever a problem, for instance, and you need to return it, you just unplug it, put it in a box and send it back, uh, rather than having to have your electrician come out and pull the wires and disconnect it. Now you've gotta pay for that. They're not gonna reimburse you for that. They might give you a new unit, but you're, you're not gonna get your reimbursed for your elect electrician's work. It, to me, it's just so much easier to just have an electrician come and install a, a 240 volt outlet, either a NEMA 1450 or a NEMA 650 outlet. And then you just plug the unit in when you buy it, mount it on the wall. And also um, we should so, probably mention that, you know, you are going to change cars and you may not get the same brand. So if you have a, let's say Tesla charger mounted or a charger specifically for a certain brand and you buy another car, you're gonna have to redo the whole thing where if you have the plug, the 240 outlet, I have 
two of them in my garage, um, you can use the cable and when you get another car, you get a different cable, but but you don't have to uh, call an electrician again. So I, so, I, I think yeah. that's another good point probably. There's a lot of reasons why, in my opinion, the plug-in units are a better way to go. And in many cases, they're not even more expensive than the hardwired. Some, some of the companies charge a little bit more for the plug-in unit, maybe $40, $50 more. Some of the companies like uh, Juicebox, for instance, doesn't charge any more for the plug-in unit. So that's something that I would really consider. Um, now, uh, uh, last thing that's really important is, do you want a smart or a dumb station? So um, a smart charger has either a Wi-Fi or PLC connection. They'll come with an app. And um, many people think that, well, it's, it's a, maybe a waste of, your, of the extra money because they don't really care about looking at their charging data and whatnot. But some people, that's really important. They like to know exactly how much energy the car is using the, or, or charging. The, the apps keep track of all that so you can determine exactly how much money the car is charging you to cost. You really don't get that information from inside the car. Uh, and because the car really displays what the car is using um, to drive, that's not all the energy it uses. There's charging losses. And so if your car says that you use 50 kilowatt hours this week, you probably took about 60 kilowatt hours to charge it. So you really don't know exactly how much the car is using unless you are monitoring it from the wall, which is one of the things that I like to know exactly what the cars are charge are costing me to charge. Um, in addition to that, a lot of the utilities now are starting these demand response programs and you need a smart charger to participate in it. And with that, you're, you actually can earn money to charge your electric car. So the, the utilities today are, are finally realizing that electric car charging is going to be a benefit to them. It's not going to be a problem because they'll be able to monitor and control tons of cars at once if people sign up and agree to be in these demand response programs. What you basically will do is when you get your car, you'll sign up with your utility to agree that if they need to in certain times, they can throttle back your car charging or even delay it a few hours you'll set in your app like, I just need my car charged by 6 a.m. I don't care when you charge it. I come home at seven o'clock at night, I plug it in. I don't care if you start charging it then or midnight or 1 a.m. or whenever. I just want the car charged by 6 a.m. And by giving them the ability to control that, they'll remotely control that, they can offer you tremendous discounts. Sometimes it's li literally 50% off the cost to charge your car. So, so Tom. that's what... That's one of the things that having a, a, a smart charger is a really, really, really uh, advan really good advantage. And it's the future of electric car charging. That's where this industry is going. Tom, so l let me understand this correctly. So the, the, it's the, uh, your utility company that's controlling your charger at home. Uh, is that correct? Or is it still you who's setting up the charge times? So no, what you're talking about is time of use, where you'll set up the charge time, say till after midnight or 1 a.m. to get a reduced rate. What I'm talking about are, are, are programs where you give your utility the right to control your charging. Okay. Now you can always override it. Like let's say you need to go out later tonight. You can say, you know, on your app, no, don't, don't control my charging today. I need to use the car later on but under normal circumstances you'll give the the utility an uh, 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 a set goal you'll say look by 6 a.m or 8 a.m i need my car at least 80 percent charged because that's all i need for my daily driving now the utility takes that information with thousands of people that are all plugged in their electric cars that day or that night and what they're able to do is um by controlling all of these cars they could make a dramatic shift in how much energy is being used at different times of the day. And utilities want the, 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 their supply or their demand to be constant. One of the biggest problems they have today is that during the day, the demand spikes up and then at night it drops way down low. And that gives them a hard time delivering the right amount of energy. But by controlling thousands and thousands of electric cars in the area, they can smooth that out. 
So what happens is they have a steady stream of electric supply and that saves them millions of dollars. And in order, and to be able to do that, it's worth it for them to give you a big discount to participate in programs like this. That's pretty cool. But you did mention something that I was also trying to get at is that uh, some utility companies charge more uh, if you're charging at the, using electricity at certain parts of time. And having that smart charger helps you just to charge your car at the time where the electricity uh, is cheaper. Can you, can you elaborate on that? Sure. So um, the, the smart chargers will allow you to do that also. But I will say that most EVs today, you can do that in the system itself. You can set time of use charging. But if you can't, the smart chargers definitely allow you to do that also. You can set it to begin charging at, at a time of day when your utility has its lowest rates. Okay. Great. I mean, I that's that's that can save people a lot of money, and this is something to be aware of. So, one of the things as part of getting your charger is talking and working with your utility company to figure out if you can benefit from uh, different rates and obviously different programs, like you mentioned. That's that that's amazing that is happening now because it's it's essentially a new way to think of our infrastructure. Now, um, I know you we've mentioned a few times, you know, uh, upgrading the panels, you know, running the uh, you know you know installing the 240 volt outlet um now let's talk about that because uh that's not something that people can do themselves this is something that can uh be a big project and also can cost uh, you know a, a decent amount of money so people need to budget for that uh can you can you talk about that sure well uh, you know uh, there's a lot of weekend warriors out there and a lot of people are are perfectly qualified to do that run a a, a 240 volt circuit uh, I'm not going to say that people that aren't qualified to do it shouldn't do it themselves. But what I will say is that I always recommend that you do hire a licensed electrician to do any kind of wiring like this. You know, um, the thing is, uh, is it that difficult? No, it's not that difficult to run one circuit and put in an outlet. But as I mentioned earlier, the thing about electric car charging is it's a big draw. It's the biggest electric draw that your house is going to have. You're going to do it every day or nearly every day for many hours at a time. So, you know, I live in my house and I sleep in my house, as I'm sure you all do. Uh, I think it's very prudent to have a licensed electrician do this work so that you make sure everything's done properly and there's no safety issues. You know, the last thing you want to do is save $300 on installing an outlet in your garage and end up burning your house down and God forbid somebody getting hurt or worse. So we always recommend that you have a licensed electrician do this uh, installation. Uh, I know many people will do it themselves and, and you know what, if, if you're qualified and you take your time and you do it right, you know, more power to you. But uh, I think it's prudent for us here on E4Electric and on Inside EVs to recommend that you use a licensed contractor to do this. And we should also know, uh, talk about people who live in apartment complexes. Uh, and there are some states like California where we have laws where, you know, if you have an electric car and I think your apartment complex has more than six units, um, you can actually, um, I don't want to say force, but uh, uh, your landlord would be required to install a charging station at your request, but you will be the one uh, paying for the installation. So it's, it's, um, you know, it's a decision to be made and running electricity all the way to your carport or to your parking uh, spot can, you know, can be complicated. That's something that um, a lot of time landlords won't let you do yourself. You will have to, you know, hire a licensed electrician. Absolutely. And what you're talking about is called right to charge legislation, where you have the right to charge your car where you live, as long as you're willing to pay for the installation and the electricity. There's a big problem across the country right now with that, where I get people reaching out to me all the time in all different states. A lot of times here in New Jersey, where I live, uh, I actually just had a friend call me up yesterday. He has a condo in Florida and they won't allow him to charge, to put in a charging station. And he spends his winters in Florida and he can't charge his car. So this is a problem across the country. California was very proactive as they are with electric vehicles and they passed this legislation that basically says you have the right to charge your electric car uh, as long as you're willing to pay for the equipment, the installation, and then meter and pay for the electricity. And that's great. We, we really need those, that type of le legislation across the country. 
All right. Well, now I know we kind of talked about, you know, what people need to think about it before um, they get their car. And obviously when they have a car right now and the charger that they're using may not be suitable or, you know, a, a, a good enough quality, they might want to upgrade. Uh, but let's talk about now uh, a Tesla specifically, because as you mentioned, that's kind of a its own uh, universe. Yeah. Well, Tesla, because they have a proprietary plug, realize that they can't just sell cars and not deal with the charging equipment like the other all the other manufacturers do. BMW is actually the only other manufacturer that designed and built their own home charging station. Uh, none of the other manufacturers did uh, but Tesla. And Tesla has, uh, as, as you know, they provide with the vehicle a uh, mobile connector, uh, which can deliver up to 32 amps, which is more than enough for home charging. Uh, even though some of the Teslas can accept more than that, 32 amps is going to get you somewhere between 25 and 30 miles of range per hour. So pretty much anyone comes home at night, plugs in their Tesla. By the next day, it's going to be fully charged or very close to fully charged. So uh, in my opinion, you don't really need the high-powered wall connector that can deliver more. Now, there's a big difference between want and need, obviously, and many uh, Tesla owners elect to buy the $500 high power wall connector and install that and then keep the portable uh, charger uh, in their car for if they're out on the road, for some reason they need to uh, plug in and, and uh, can't find a supercharger, which is uh, you know hard to believe except some of the really rural areas of the country. So um, those people buy the high power wall connector. It's a great unit uh, It mounts on the wall and uh, it's, it's safety certified. Uh, it is only NEMA 3 rated, but, um, you know, it's it's fine for most any uh, instances. And uh, it's, it's a really good unit. Now, Teslas do come with uh, the connector adapters. So you, you could use any charging station. You could buy a juice box, a Clipper Creek, uh, you know, flow unit, a charge point home, whatever you want. If you didn't want to buy the Tesla high power wall charger and then just use your adapter. Other thing is you probably don't want to use your adapter every day. I think it makes sense if you have a Tesla to really consider the uh, high power wall charger. If that, if you want a stationary charging station for at home, a uh, couple th things to note about that Tesla just released their uh, plug-in version. The high power wall charger had previously only been available in a high power in a hardwired version, but just a few months ago, Tesla released their plug-in version, which I think is a, great uh, upgrade uh, and it also can do power sharing so you can put two high power wall connectors on the wall and supply one electric supply with them and what will happen is like the superchargers if just one car plugs in it'll get full power but if a second car plugs in uh, if you put in a second uh, charge uh, high power wall charger what they'll do is they won't trip your circuit breaker they'll share the power uh, there's a few other chargers out there that'll do that. You can buy a Clipper Creek unit that can do that. Uh, the juice box comes out of the box standard with power sharing features. So um, that's good if you are have a limited supply. This goes back to earlier when we talked about if you don't have the capacity. Let's say you only have the capacity to add one 40 amp line in your house, um, but you have two electric cars. You might want to consider getting a charger that can power share like the Tesla high power wall charger or the juice box uh, by Enel. So um, that's a good option that Tesla has. So basically if you own a Tesla, uh, I like I do now, I'm just using their the portable mobile charger. That's fine for daily use. Uh, I don't find a need to spend the $500 and get the, uh, the, the high power wall connector. Uh, I would consider getting uh, another brand, maybe a smart charger, if you really wanted to get a, uh, a, a stationary level two charger, only because, as I mentioned earlier, I really do believe that the future of electric car charging is going to be working with utilities with demand response programs. So uh, I would tend to recommend people today to really consider getting a smart charger if they're going to buy one, uh, only because I think in a few years, everyone's going to want them or, or need them to, to participate in these programs. And there's no use shelling out five, $600 today. And then 
four or five years down the road, you got to shell out another four or five hundred dollars to get a smart charger. Not so, just to qu clarify, uh, now the the Tesla uh, unit is not a smart unit, right? Everything is handled right. actually inside the car. Now, is that possible to buy a smart charging uh, station um, and then still have it uh, to work with Tesla? Like, for example, you mentioned the adapter. Is that a good solution? Yeah, that's what you know. I, I would probably do today. Uh, as much as I like the Tesla high power wall charger, I think it's a, a really good unit. Uh, if if I didn't have a thousand chargers behind me and I wanted to buy one charging station for my home, uh, I'd probably get a smart charger and then just use the Tesla adapter if I had a Tesla. Uh, so that's something that you definitely want to consider. Uh, I believe the industry is going in that direction, and honestly, I believe. For mass electric car adoption, we have to do that because that's going to enable the utilities to manage the incredible demand that all these millions of electric cars are going to have. So, uh, you know, I, I don't think it's even optional for the utilities. I think, you know, it's something that they have to do. And what it's going to do is really it's going to lower the rates for everybody because it's going to allow them to have a stable electric demand and supply. And that's going to benefit all the rate payers. All right. So I just want to summarize for those who are, you know, just about to get an electric car. There are a few things they need to go, you know, get going. Correct me if I'm wrong. First, they need to figure out what they're, you know, are they in control of their own power in their house and figure out the technician that will be able to come up and, and either install an outlet where they can plug in their portable uh, charger or install an actual charging unit because that costs money and time and so forth. Um, secondly, they need to pick that unit and hopefully the one that doesn't burn their house down. So they need to check on their, you know, the, the quality of the unit and so forth. And thirdly, they need to work uh, with their utility company and see if there are any benefits of having a small charger where the um either utility uh, company can control it or they can uh, schedule it for the lower priced uh, uh, electricity rates. Um, so those are the three main things that they need to be concerned about. But of, of course, uh, that can actually factor in into what kind of an electric car to buy because now we have so many choices and, and even more choices uh, next year. Um, did I miss anything? Yeah, and I, I actually missed something. I forgot to mention earlier uh, the power. Uh, all these charging stations have different levels of power. Some can deliver 16 amps, some 24, some 32, some 40, some as high as 80 amps. One of the, the new Blink station that I have behind me here can, can deliver 80 amps. So you need to pair that with what your car can deliver. With an eye on the future, I always recommend that even if your car can only accept 3.3 uh, .3 kilowatts today, 16 amps, Get a, a home charging solution that can deliver at least 32 amps, preferably 40. The, the cost to get a slightly high powered station is, is minimal. It's maybe 40 or $50 more. But what you get then is your future proofing your garage. So if the next car you have, you might only have a car today that can deliver 30 amps, but then you might buy a car that can accept 40 amps uh, next year. Deliver, not accept. Uh, accept, not deliver. Um, if the car can accept four, 30 amps today, your next EV might be able to take 40 amps. So I, I like to recommend buying at least a 32 amp uh, charging station, preferably 40 amps. It gives you a little added uh, cushion. The car can charge a little bit quicker. If you have a really big battery electric car, like the new Audi e-tron that's got a 95 kilowatt hour battery, or a Tesla that has these huge batteries, you, you might want a little bit a few more amps just to charge at a slightly higher rate and that future proofs your garage. So uh, definitely consider some of the higher powered ones. I don't really see the need to look for one that's more than 40 or 48 amps. Uh, I think that's just overkill over that. But uh, consider what the, your car you have today, consider what car you might have tomorrow. You know, I, I'm realizing that we've like I, I feel like we just just have have this video information jammed, and this is already our I think the longest videos that we've done because this is such a big topic that uh, we might actually uh, uh, do another video uh, about this because this is one of the biggest concerns, and I think one of the biggest misses. People just kind of don't they're trying to concentrate on getting a car, and and they don't pay attention to something like as important as, as home charging. So um, unfortunately, Alex, what a lot of people do is they just go to Amazon and type in electric car charger 
and they see, oh, this one's only $199. It's the cheapest one, and they buy it. And they're getting a, a really very low quality unit, like I said, that's made in Korea or China or somewhere where there's no quality control and it's not safety certified. They get the unit and it burns out in six months. You're lucky if it just burns out. You're lucky if it doesn't burn your house down. So, I mean, I had one person email me and complain that they're on their third unit um, and they keep buying the same one, you know, and it lasts like eight months, it stopped working and they're like, Tom oh, Tom, we, um, I think we lost Tom, but I, I, I think I know where he's going with this. So uh, I'm gonna finish this for him actually. Um, and uh, so, we're, and, and you know what? I have to admit that we've been, uh, as we've been talking about it, I've been sitting here and I cannot wait for this to be over. Not because I don't enjoy Tom talking. I cannot be, wait for this to be over because I need to run to my garage and see if I have that certified sticker or whatever on, uh, on, uh, on, on my unit. Because I have to admit that when I got my uh, uh, Chevy Volt, it did come with a unit, but when I was, uh, when I, at one time I left my car over the week in my garage uh, before I even moved in here, and somebody got in and stole my charger. So I went to, and I can't believe uh, Tom actually said it, I went to Amazon and I typed the, 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 the electric car, I, I did everything wrong, apparently. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna go and check up on that. Uh, but, uh, you know, just, just to finish this up, um, this is a bigger topic than we probably even could jam into this 45 minutes of video. Uh, and, you know, Tom is a huge specialist on this. We'll obviously, uh, gonna talk about it as there are more units coming up to the, uh, to, to market. Um, as utility uh, companies get involved more, the, the new car, uh, cars coming into the market with the different charging abilities and stuff like that. As Tom mentioned, the, the actual chargers actually in the car, even though we're calling chargers, you know, the units that you see here. Um, so we're definitely gonna, uh, uh, you know, talk a, a little bit more about that. Um, obviously, there's a link in the description of this video where you can uh, uh, follow Tom on uh, Inside EVs. Uh, I, I would suggest you browse that link because he has done quite a few videos and quite a few articles um, on this and, and for different brands and so forth so if you really want to dive in um he already has a library of amazing um, um articles to to read through uh and probably the only uh like complete catalog of that um and of course i always recommend following him on uh twitter uh tom malog uh t-o-m-m-o-l-o-g uh on 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 twitter because he's pretty active there um i love the fact when he calls out some of the companies like toyota and so forth when they try to uh serve us with some a little bit of uh bs um so definitely follow him there. Don't forget uh, uh, Tom uh, Malogny, of, uh, we, 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 he's here every week. <laughs> this is not just one video we do. Uh, he has a segment every week here and we call it, and I'm gonna dig the graphics up once again, plugged in with Tom Malogny. So uh, browse to the description of this video to check out uh, uh, what he is doing on Inside EVs. Of course, don't forget to get on our VIP list where we uh, um, service uh, you guys with an extra bonus article every Saturday, something we just don't have time to cover here on this channel or even on our website. That's absolutely free, just like Biden Reservation. So go to e4electric.com slash VIP. Of course, I want to uh, thank one of my newer Patreons, Neil Weaver. Thank you so much for joining my Patreon community. Um, that's how I put the uh, you know foot on my table by you guys uh, 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 supporting my my channel and of course you can uh, watch these live um, uh, looking forward to your comments tell us what we haven't covered any type of issues or, or questions you have We'll definitely uh, do another video on this because Tom is pretty much the best guy to, uh, to to give the information about this other than that see you next time and remember to stay charged.